there. So let me start with the moving party counsel for Mr. Peterson. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we did go to the district attorney's office in Stanislaus County on February 13th to have a meet and confer. Unfortunately, we were unable to resolve any issues. I do have a letter uh, memorializing the, the discussions that were had. If the court would like a copy, I'd be happy to provide that. Um, I sent it to the district attorney's office on February 24th, just setting forth the issues we discussed and um, the impasses that we, we had. Okay, thank you. Council for the People. Your Honor, we did have a meet and confer, and um, we are at the position where we intend to file our motion, our responsive motion. And what we need the court's help with perhaps is identifying the date that we begin to run that time. We have 90 days of service. We're, hold on just a second, Ms. Lodiger. We're getting a little bit of background. I'm going to mute, uh, or I'm going to ask the clerk to mute Mule Creek because we are getting some background noise. So, I, Mr. Peterson, if you do need to communicate with your counsel at any point, you can uh, let us know that by simply raising your hand so that we can unmute you. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Lodiger. Thank you. So, uh, we received the motion with all the attachments on January 9th. The AG's office, which also needed to be served, received the motion with the attachments, exhibits, on January 23rd. So we will be ready to file our response by 90 days from either of those dates. We're looking at either April 22nd from when the AG was served or April 18th from when we were served. Okay. And so uh, if we're going to be, if that's going to be when you're going to be filing your responses or when you're going to be ready to file your responses, uh, how much time would Mr. Peterson's counsel need to then file any replies? Your Honor, we would ask for uh, two weeks. Okay. Uh, can I just inquire, um, we were given somewhat mixed signals at the meet and confer concerning whether the district attorney's office intends to file a blanket opposition to both motions or whether there are some specific items that they will be objecting to and others that they will not with respect to the discovery motion. So if the court could inquire whether they intend to file a blanket motion opposing all requests or if it's with respect to certain items, perhaps we could begin uh, receiving the items that they are not objecting to. I mean, I would expect that the that council could handle that in the meet and confer process. Um, so the people are entitled to an opportunity to respond. They can decide what the scope of their response is going to be. If you're going to need two weeks to respond to that, then I will set a hearing uh, that contemplates that you will have time to file a reply and I will have time to read all of the pleadings before we uh, have the hearing. So let's see. If uh, the people are looking at being ready to file their responsive pleadings by the 22nd of April and council's going to need at least two weeks uh, for the reply, then that would put us with a briefing finishing somewhere around May 6th. Um, so we would be looking at a hearing. I'd like at least two weeks to review uh, the last of the pleadings, so somewhere on or after the 20th of May. Your Honor, if I might, um, yes. in terms of the timing of our response, I was speaking specifically about the DNA motion. Mm -hmm. that we'll be ready to respond to that on that date. Okay. And then we would ask for an opportunity to file a response to the discovery motion as well, and we would ask 90 days from the date we file the DNA motion to respond to the discovery motion. Um, is there a reason that you need uh, an additional 90 days uh, beyond for the discovery motion or why they can't go in parallel, Ms. Wadiger? Yes, Or Mr. Harris? Yes. Um, as the court may have already seen in the pleadings, the defense pleadings in this particular case, specifically for the DNA motion, is 142 pages of pleadings plus over 880 pages of exhibits that are attached. The exhibits came to us later than the initial pleadings, and so that's been one of the delays for us, having to go through each of those particular exhibits. The statute for the DNA motion does have a 90-day deadline. The statute for the discovery does not have a deadline. It just it has been interpreted by the court to be a reasonable time frame. Okay. Um, we think that the DNA motion would also assist, having that resolved would also assist in some aspects as to the discovery motion. Um, because specifically in the statute it says that the two do not work necessarily in conjunction. Right. Um, also, the, the discovery motion itself is another 62 pages with a, a large volume of exhibits for that as well. So we've been concentrating on trying to get the DNA motion, which does have the deadline done. Uh, a lot of the materials that we will have in the DNA response will be applicable to the discovery, but we just think a reasonable time period based on uh, the size of these motions, uh, it's not unreasonable to ask for um, 
another period of time? Well, I guess the concern that I have about 90 plus 90 in terms of your responsive pleadings is that the Court of Appeal has issued a stay for a relatively limited period of time. We're working on a six-month uh, deadline before, and I understand that there is the potential for an extension of that deadline if there's additional good cause and not being done with the pleadings here uh, and with the hearings here determining the scope of the discovery would um, potentially uh, be good cause, but given that they uh, have sort of given us a six-month time window to work with for what they think would be an initial uh, opening, uh, I'm concerned that setting a briefing schedule for uh, that exhausts the entirety of that time period is not going to be viewed as potentially reasonable by them. So, and these two statutes, well, I understand that they a lot of the issues may be interconnected with the discovery the defense is seeking. I don't see uh, a lot of what they're seeking in the 1054.9 motion appears to me to be in the nature of uh, file reconstruction. Some of it, not so much, but um, there are things where essentially they're asking for missing bait stamp numbers uh, and other things that are referenced in reports that they already have. I don't understand why that couldn't be worked on in parallel. That's what I'm, that's what I'm still waiting to hear. So if the people want to address that, I'd be... Happy to hear any argument on it. Yes, Your Honor. Um, one of the things as it relates to the discovery motion, there is a couple of issues. One is it, we believe it to be issue preclusion. For in fact, there has already been a previous 1054.9 motion that has been brought, has been litigated, and resolved primarily against the defense back in 2011, 2012. So because of that, we have to go back and we have to call out what has previously been dealt with, and that's requiring us, again, to go back through things that are not necessarily in their materials, but it's in the uh, court record. Um, we also believe that a lot of these items have been raised and litigated as part of the initial appeal and also litigated as part of the first habeas. So because of that, there's, and unfortunately, we will be providing to the court or asking the court to take judicial notice, of the petition that was there because a lot of these issues have been raised and have been adjudicated. So because of that, there's a lot of back and forth from the record uh, and there is gonna be a large amount of reading for both sides. Okay, um, there was, that brings up another point. The defense did make a request in the uh, initial round of pleadings for the court to take judicial notice of the entirety of the trial court file, the entirety of the direct appeal, the entirety of the uh, habeas proceedings and uh, all the Supreme Court proceedings, uh, including all the pleadings. Uh, is there any objection to that request from the people? There is as to some portions. We have a portion of it in our response to the DNA motion to address that, but okay. basically for the court, Anything that is part of the record of the case that has been adjudicated, we have no objection to that being uh, taken judicial notice of because it's the law of the case in a sense. What we do have a complaint about is there's a request from the petitioners that the court take judicial notice of their pleadings in these new proceedings. Those are hearsay, and we they, just because they've been filed does not make them admissible. So because of that, we will be objecting to those portions of their request, but the fact that there is a new petition and the previous court proceedings, those we don't have uh, any objection to for judicial notice. Okay. Um, the reason I inquired was because uh, since you had referenced that there were other parts of the file that you were going to be asking uh, the court to take judicial notice of, I thought we might be able to get at least some of that out of the way. But if it's going to be covered in your responsive pleadings, I will wait to rule on any request for judicial notice until I see what the scope of the dispute is. All right, so uh, let me hear from the defense on the proposed briefing uh, timing and uh, timing of potential new hearings. Yes, Your Honor. We provided a very, very detailed uh, informal request for discovery on November 14th, four months ago. So the district attorney's office has known for four months which specific items of discovery we are requesting. We gave them references to Bates pages, we gave them references to where in the police reports the items we're requesting are, are referred to. We, um, we were very, very specific. We spent a lot of time trying to suss out what frankly are very alarming deficiencies in the discovery that was provided to the defense at the time of trial. Those are the items we're requesting. I agree it should not take 
90, what, 180 days for them to find, locate those items and provide them to us. They were, they, the defense was entitled to those at the time of trial. Mr. Peterson has been waiting 20 years to find some of these police reports and audio recordings and video recordings that should have been provided. So I don't think that the nature of the request, it's not a fishing expedition. They're very precise, they're very specific, and we believe that they are uh, probably very easily accessible. So we would ask that, that they begin providing the discovery that we are entitled to under 1054.9. The prior 1054.9 that Mr. Harris referenced does not include what we are asking for. It related specifically, almost exclusively, to expert materials and other evidence that is not included in our motion. So we, we are eager to get our investigation underway and completed. The Court of Appeal did give us a very short time period within which to conduct our investigation. Uh, the materials we are asking for are, are reasonable. They're within the scope of 1054.9. And we would like to begin receiving that discovery as soon as possible. OK. Um, so in terms of briefing schedule, uh, the court is prepared to uh, accept the proposal by the district attorney as far as the DNA testing motion uh, is going. Um, and so the response for the, um, the response of pleadings on the DNA motion will be due uh, no later than close of business uh, filed and served by April 22nd. Um, Given the timetable that was contemplated by the Court of Appeal uh, and the fact that essentially the discovery request was made uh, prior to uh, the Court of a this motion being filed and prior to the Court of Appeal issuing their stay uh, on the proceedings to allow these issues to be litigated in the trial court, um, I am inclined to agree uh, with the defense that a request for an additional 90 days beyond the briefing on the um, 1054 issues um, is is too long, given the timetable that the Court of Appeal has given us. Uh, I'll, in terms of the briefing for the 1054.9, because the requests uh, are extensive, it's a 62-page discovery letter uh, with a number of subparts. Some of it is specifically identified by missing bait stamp numbers, but some of it is broader than that. Uh, so the court is inclined to go about 30 days beyond the uh, briefing deadline on the DNA motion. Um, and so if I'm looking at roughly the end of May for the 1054.9 uh, reply, could you have it done on or before the 20th of May? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So May 20th will be the briefing deadline for the 1054.9. All right, and then with the, um, so if you're looking for at least two weeks for the reply, um, Ms. Mitchell, that your, your reply will be already done on the DNA before you get the responsive pleadings on the 1054.9. Uh, how much time do you contemplate you'll need for a reply on the 1054.9? We could file our reply by June 3rd. Okay, so. Uh, so reply pleadings for the defense on the DNA will be uh, due if you're looking for two weeks, that would put it uh, May 6th. And reply pleadings for the 1054.9, uh, you indicated June 3rd, so that's fine. Um, motion to seal. That is uh, something that I think we probably should, uh, can and should do before we deal with the, the substantive pleadings. Um, and so I did not see a, uh, a responsive pleading on the motion to seal. How much time do the people think that they would need on a responsive pleading to the motion to seal? The only issue that we have as to the motion to seal, and this is why we have not filed something, is the documents in question that are being requested, the people have never been provided with an unredacted copy of those reports. We still do not know who these witnesses are. They're anonymous to us. Um, so we're asking the court to order the petitioner to turn those over to us before uh, we can actually decide on one way or the other. But it's the people's position is we probably won't be objecting to the motion to seal based on what's alleged once we have that information. Okay. Ms. Mitchell? Your Honor, the identity of the witnesses whose names are redacted in the um, declarations that Mr. Harris is referring to have stated that they 
are fearful of retaliation by the Modesto Police Department if their names become known and have asked that their names remain sealed. I would request that we perhaps have a conference in chambers to discuss this issue. It's sensitive to our ongoing investigation. There are a number of other witnesses who we have been investigating who are in a similar situation. Okay. Well, uh, all I'm asking for essentially is a briefing schedule for the motion to seal. And there's a procedure that's set forth in the rules of court for a motion to seal in terms of lodging a pleading with the court that is uh, the proposed sealing and the narrowly tailored uh, nature of it and serving it on the opposing party. Um, it appears that that actually hasn't been done in this case. All of the police, all of the pleadings that were filed were essentially filed publicly but with the redactions that you are proposing. Um, so in terms of the procedure for the motion to seal it is, I would say, somewhat unusual given the rules of court. Um, and I anticipate that the parties will not be the only ones who want to be heard on the issue of the motion to seal, uh, given the nature of the case. So uh, let's set a briefing schedule. I'm not going to make any specific orders uh, and whether or not the motion is compliant with the rules of court uh, and the uh, proposed redactions are uh, within the nature of the rules of court is something I'm going to rule on at the time of the motion. Not now when I have one motion, not a response, and not all the pleadings that I anticipate that I'm going to get on it. Um, so how much time would the people need in order to be prepared to file a response to what is in the record? Two weeks would be fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, and then any reply that you may have uh, to that, Ms. Mitchell, how much time would you need once you get the people's response? Uh, one week, please, Your Honor. Okay, so two weeks from today is the 26th of March, so people's response will be due March 26th, close of business. Uh, and you said one week, Ms. Mitchell, for your reply. That would put it about April 3rd. So April 3rd for motion to seal reply. And we will need to set, uh, let's set a hearing date on the motion to seal and then uh, hearing dates on the DNA and the 1054.9. The hearing date on the motion to seal can be earlier, um, so that'll be, uh, we'll do that first. Uh, proposals from council if we're uh, looking at April 3rd for the close of briefing and the court is gonna take, the court will need about a week to review on the motion to seal. Uh, so anytime after April 15th is fine. What's council's preference? Uh, we can do April 16th. April 16th is fine for us. It's fine for the court. All right. Let me just check the court schedule. Yeah, I'm free April 16th, so that's fine. April 16th, 9 a.m., motion to seal. And uh, Ms. Mitchell, is Mr. Peterson going to want to uh, be personally present for that or continue to appear electronically? Uh, my understanding is that his preference is to appear electronically, but he can correct me if that is not accurate. Okay, and can we, let's go ahead and ask to unmute for that. Still muted. All right, Mr. Peterson, uh, we're yeah. contemplating an April 16th hearing on the motion to seal the pleadings in, or parts of the pleadings in this matter. Uh, are you going to want to appear via uh, Zoom or in person for that? Uh, yeah. Zoom is fine, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, then, for hearing dates on the uh, DNA motion in the 1054.9, what's the party's preference in terms of hearing those together or separately? Your Honor, we would prefer to hear the, have the DNA issue resolved as soon as possible so that if there is going to be testing ordered, we can get that started. Okay. People? <laughs> Okay, that's fine. So if the uh, briefing on the DNA motion is going to be completed by uh, May 6th, then 
And if I need a couple of weeks to read the pleadings, then we're looking at the last week of May. So uh, any preference uh, by council during the week of May 27th for the hearing on the DNA motion and what is the time estimated necessary for that argument? Uh, we can be available May 28th, Tuesday, May 28th. Okay. That is the day after Memorial Day, so I don't know if that's going to cause travel problems or any issues for the court's calendar. I don't have any plans on Memorial Day, but uh, if uh, council do and they would prefer to go to the 29th or sometime later in the week, that's fine. 29th is fine. Okay. And uh, do we think it'll be anything uh, more than a full day? I don't think it should be more than a full day. Ms. Mitchell? Uh, I have, having not seen their opposition, I can't say, but I would hope not more than a day. Okay, we'll block off a full day for it, so, uh, and it may not take that long, but uh, we'll be prepared if it does. May 29th at 9 a.m. for uh, the DNA testing motion. Then, um, the 10.50, oh, and uh, so in terms of the DNA testing motion, uh, Ms. Mitchell, does, uh, do you know if Mr. Peterson has a preference in terms of Zoom or personal appearance? I believe it's uh, his preference is Zoom. Is that correct, Mr. Peterson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so that'll be via Zoom. Okay, and then uh, we'll need to schedule the 1054.9 uh, hearing. If the briefing is going to close on that on June 3rd, then we will need, uh, if the court needs, that is going to run into some travel plans that I have, uh, and I'm going to need to step off the bench briefly to confirm exactly when I'm returning because it's an extensive uh, absence in June. So um, let me step off the bench briefly, consult my calendar, and let you know after essentially when I'm going to be returning and when I will be uh, available for that, and then we'll discuss dates. So we'll take a brief recess.